this arrived. This is the replacement I've been sent by Seagate. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to part two of my Seagate recovery video. Now for those that aren't aware, I already started this video quite a way ago, or for me anyway, I know it's been published pretty recently, but I wanted to test out the Seagate recovery process that arrives with a number of their Pro Series drives as well as being available to purchase separately. For those that aren't aware, what it is, is the ability to buy a NAS drive or even some of the more enterprise level drives and it includes something called the Rescue Recovery Service. It is a disaster recovery that when you buy a number of the Pro Series drives from Seagate, they arrive with this little R there. If we look there, we try and get the light not to ruin that too much. We've got this Rescue Recovery data recovery built into it. So when your drive if you encounter any problems in the future, you know, when normally these things are covered by warranty and stuff like that, so you can get a replacement drive. On top of that, Seagate include this rescue recovery service where they'll let you send the drive off to them and they will perform forensic level, mechanical level if necessary, recovery of the data on that disc. Now, it's worth highlighting a number of things in the course of this video. In the previous video, I made notes up there on the screen in the new studio here, we, re we placed somewhere in the region of five point, um, I think 51.8 gigabytes of data on a hard disk, a Seagate NAS IronWolf drive, a Pro Series drive. Then we systematically damaged that drive to an extent where it stopped working. Now, of course, that was a very extreme thing that I did. At one point, I dipped the drive in water and another, I threw it down the stairs. These are very extreme things cases that I'm going to talk about throughout the video. But do remember that the Seagate recovery process isn't just about mechanical damage. It covers accidental deletion, malware recovery and stuff like that where your, the data on your drive is still there on a level but access it's largely impossible by conventional means. So I sent that drive off as that video showed and hopefully if you haven't watched that video please stop watching now and make your way back to that video. This arrived. This is the replacement I've been sent by Seagate. Now, first and foremost, this does not have a hard drive inside. I know it doesn't, I can feel by the weight. I know they're supposed to send an external drive, but if this has a hard drive inside, I'll be absolutely astounded. I think it can't weigh more than a couple of hundred grams. In fact, if I look at the UPS label, they list it as one kilo, which it definitely isn't. So presumably that's a limitation by UPS and their shipping. But in a number of cases, it's worth highlighting that when you do get a drive, um, you know, replaced via this process, and this is largely from blogs and forums, as well as when I reached out to Seagate themselves before opening this, um, depending on the situation and the recovery, in some cases they will send you back not only your data on an external disk, which at this weight it better be, but on top of that they'll also send you back the original drive under warranty. But of course, if the way the disk has been damaged is malicious, which presumably their process looked at the sheer damage I did, None of that damage comes under the heading of conventional or, you know, understandable damage. That was extreme and obviously on purpose. So it doesn't look like they've sent me a replacement drive back, but it is going to be discretionary with them. And I'm sure there are a number of cases where they'd send that drive. And of course, if the drive failure is mechanical, then they will send you the external drive and a replacement drive too. But let's get this open. Again, don't use scissors like this at home. It's fairly unconventional. Um, and again, they will utilise largely their own discs, I imagine. Um, if they don't, you know, I'm kind of expecting one of those Seagate Backup Plus jobs like we did on the video before. Um, oh, oh wait. I'll try and get this on camera as much as possible. We have some foam. So the disc at least is protected in transit. And we have a Backup Slim. Now, again... This should have a drive inside, and it's worth mentioning they've sent me a two terabyte disc, and the, the disc we destroyed was two terabytes, I believe. But on top of that, that's more than enough space for that storage that we've lost on there. Now, presumably, if my drive hadn't been bashed to pieces, the original drive would have been sent back in an RMA process, and that would have arrived first. And again, there will be a third part to this video where we're in the next video where we're going to go into more detail about the process that happened behind the scenes on this drive. Hopefully if Seagate want to elaborate more on that. But let's get this open. Um, it's worth mentioning the seal is already broken on there. So they've clearly used the unit they had in stock. 
and we're going to get that open. See what we've got inside here. We have the usual stuff. We have backup plus storage leaflet in, in right there. I know the light's a little bit bright in this room. We have that open. Something for the Adobe Creative Cloud. And again, this is generally available with all of their external drives, a little space of online storage. We have the drive itself already packed there, and I'm not going to say fully sealed because it is just a tape seal there. And we have a USB A to USB micro B cable there, which again, if we look at, and again, we've all seen an external drive before, we know what they look like. So if we get this drive open, it is a standard Seagate Backup Plus. It's got that nice little effect they do there on the back of the drive, but that is just a standard Seagate Backup Drive. It is a slim, but it is still a backup drive. That's probably about, I don't know, two terabytes, probably about 50 or 60 quid, that drive there, brought retail. So, here is gonna be the next stage of things that I'm quite looking forward to, because we are gonna move over to the screen in a second. Now, when I originally got you know the confirmation this was coming back i got notifications all the way through this i got a notification from them give or take about every seven or eight days there's a whole portal that you access where you have to use your case number and you have to use your email address and when you're on there it gives you information about the process where it is in the queue and how much work has been done so far as well as the recovery whether it's been successful and you can chart that progress throughout the entire recovery process. And you get notifications and updates via email. So when I got this email about important information about my data recovery case, it informed me that the media, uh, that data has been recovered and the media has been shipped. But on top of that, they include a BitLocker password. So when you get this drive, it's going to be locked. It's going to be encrypted. And according to this, I've got my login here and lots of information about the tracking process there on screen. I might flash on again once we get this up and running. But for now, let's get this connected. Get that on there and see what happens. Let's make our way over to that screen. Well, as we can see, the drive is BitLocker protected. As we expected, we've got that password there and the drive at the moment doesn't give us any means of accessing that drive. Now, for those that need the reminder, it was 51.8 gigabytes of files, and uh, of files, actually 910 individual files spread across 33 folders. Now, this is the original email they sent me. Let me know about the encrypted data there. And if we double click, click copy, then make our way into this PC and we can see the encrypted drive there. For those that aren't aware about BitLocker, it's very straightforward and largely included on most operational platforms now. Click unlock drive, a little pop up up here. We'll paste our solution into there. And we can always say that it'll always be unlocked on this PC or not. And then we'll click unlock. That now has unlocked this drive. So if we have a look at the unlocked drive, the drive is there, there's the full disk. If we make our way in, we can see a number of folders here. Now, a bunch of these are the standard files and folders you would expect from an external drive like the Backup Plus Slim. But down here, the ones that we care the most about are recovered files. These are the ones where we want to know about the content of that original drive and how much, if all or some, has been recovered. So if we move forward, we can get, it looks like it's been broken down into two kinds of files. And it suggests that the 51 gig of damaged files are in this folder. So let's see how damaged they are. Let's select some of these files and folders. Let's go for the thick of it. Needless to say, we're not going to have the audio playing during the course of this video. And we can see that that file is definitely fragmented there at 52 seconds. So that's not the whole file. Now, maybe if we use recovery software further, we might be able to piece that together, but that file still remains to be broken. Next, let's look at a, a photo file. Let's look at some of these pictures. And let's have a look at some of the pictures from Berlin. Make our way into there. And we can see lots of files and folders. But again, as much as some files have been recovered, all isn't perfect. And some of the files, because of the sheer damage and extent that we did to these files, some of these pictures are just not recovered. And again, that's a testament to Seagate to get as much as they can out of this drive. But there's still no ignoring the fact that what we did to that drive bordered on lunacy. Now, if we go through some of these files and folders, we can have a look at what we've got. Now, that's obviously one where the resolution's not been saved, 
and we've still got damages there but they have managed to recover a lot more than I thought they would. I didn't think in any realm that all the data would be protected given the sheer damage we did to it but it's still great to see that some of it recovered nevertheless. Next let's make our way over to movies. These are the ones that I thought the least likely to recover just because of the sheer weight of some of these files. Now this already kind of surprises me because this is a whole film. This is an entirely recovered file. Now VLC is notorious for not wanting you to skip forward and I could you try to use VLC to strip the index but it does look like a large amount of data from that video file has been recovered. Next let's make our way back over to the good file side. So it looks like there's just under a, a, tera, um, a gigabyte of recovered data there. We, in the audio files bin we can see loads of those audio files have been successfully recovered. I do think we are going to see a high success rate with regards to those smaller files in recovery. Now the fact that this 4K sample has been recovered I find very very impressive indeed because this is the kind of file I thought would never get recovered because they are such complex files overall. But for the most part I've got to say I'm impressed because yes if this was in a NAS configuration what we would want is some of that parity data restored because those are the gaps but for the most part the recovery of this drive is still pretty damn impressive for the sheer amount of damage we performed on this disk. Don't get me wrong it would have been great if 100% of those files had been recovered and I long since gave up that that was going to be the case the minute I chucked that drive down the stairs but we're going to move things forward to the third stage in this recovery process video where we're going to talk more to Seagate about everything that happened during the course of this recovery. I look forward to doing that video with you guys. If there's anything more you want to see or see a follow-up to this recovery video, then do let me know. But this has been a little look at the Seagate Rescue Recovery Service and what you get if you go through extreme damage. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And if you think of any more tests that you want to see to do with NAS, NAS, Thunderbolt, hard drive, SSD or more, do let me know. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.